thing I must say is this is not an anti-police rally in any way, shape or form. At all. What it is, is myself and Garth and Bill and I know a number of you are concerned about what is going on with policing in Napier and possibly across Hawke's Bay. And so if we can get some answers as well, that would be fantastic. What we are going to do at the end is vote on a resolution. Now the reason for that is, uh, we, I, I put this up on Facebook, we've had, we've had hoardings up, we've had uh, the back page of the Napier Mail, as you know, and we've, we've advertised this quite widely. Um, but a couple of people have said to me, well, what difference is this going to make? How can we make a difference if decisions have already been made? <coughs> well, there's two things. First of all, just by showing up and voicing your concern or showing your concern, <coughs> I think that does send a message to the police that there are some answers that the community wants. The second thing is, um, what the police are, are undertaking here is something they've never done before in Hawke's Bay. It might be an experiment, but we can talk about that. But what I would like the, to ask the police to do is review this in 12 months, and if it hasn't worked, i.e. crime hasn't dropped, or the number of what they now call victimizations has got, hasn't gone down, or people aren't feeling satisfied, and I'll talk about this in a little bit more depth later, then the police undertake to review this. I think that's what we want, because well, let, let's start. Now, there's, a, there's just a couple of things I want to... A bit of background. Now, Gail's going to give you um, a bit of background about what's happening in policing, but there's just a couple of things I'd like to say <coughs> that sort of set alarm bells off for me. And keeping in mind, I, I'm also a Labour's police spokesperson and not just the MP for Napier. So I take, I take a good hard look at that using my spokesperson hat as well. And one thing that concerned me is there's something called a briefing to an incoming minister, and it's written by whatever department or ministry the minister takes over. Judith Collins took over police in December of last year, and so the police wrote a briefing to the incoming minister. It's called a BIM. I mean, politics are all these acronyms, don't worry about it. But what the police said, the major issues that need immediate priorities, the first one was fiscal sustainability. That was before policing excellence and a four-year plan. So the police highlighted to the minister that they have concerns. And when they, when they put in fiscal sustainability, in an overview it said, and I quote, this is a quote, achieving fiscal sustainability is an immediate priority for police. Over the last four years, police has absorbed $300 million in cost pressures and maintained this level of savings. So what we're finding is people like Sergeant Venables, who is the area district commander, and every other police district has been squeezed for money. In my view, we're under resource, but we're going to see how this perhaps is playing out in the bay. But the other thing I also want to talk about is there is an initiative going on at the moment called Police in Excellence. And in fact, the Commissioner of Police, um, Mike Bush, he retains the portfolio for Police in Excellence. So that is the overarching thing that the police are hoping to achieve. Now it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? This was in the business case. I should say, um, all, a lot of these facts are actually um, based on something called the Hawke's Bay Property Napier Police Station business case, put out by the New Zealand Police. This is dated January 2016. So this is where my information comes from. I'm not, I'm not making it up, and if I'm wrong, then I would, again, I am very, very happy to be corrected. But what it says about policing excellence, it says, the policing excellence program is moving into its second phase. It will, this is a quote, further reduce the crime rate, increase productivity and efficiency, provide options for reducing costs, and allow greater adventure, uh, investment in the prevention of crime and road trauma. Now, they all sound fantastic. And believe me, I am all for increasing police efficiency and operational excellence and solving more crimes and preventing crime. And if what is going to occur across Hawke's Bay does this, then that's fantastic. But I have my doubts, and this is, this is why we called this meeting. What the, and, and I've highlighted the things in red. Please didn't I have. The things I've highlighted is pe people receive appropriate response. We want that, absolutely. The second thing I've highlighted is communities are supported to resolve safety issues. 
We all agree with that. And the last two that I've highlighted, and in my view, two very important points is trust and confidence in the police is maintained. We absolutely need that. And the last one, the most important one, is the public is satisfied with police service. That is a huge one for me. Because I believe a decent chunk of policing is actually public relations. If we feel we're safe, if we feel that police are going to turn up when there's an incident, if we feel that the, that the police are catching the bad guys, then the job of the police is a lot easier. If we are dissatisfied with the police, or if we have concerns, or if we see things we don't like happening with the police, then that is a problem with the police. That, that is a problem in terms of the perception that the community has of the police. And that, that's a problem that I think needs to be addressed. Now let's, let's have a look at police numbers in Napier. This is from the business case. What it says is over the last decade, the Napier City has seen a slowing demand for police services. However, <coughs> violence offending has been increasing. This is Napier City, not, not the whole district. And keeping in mind, this district goes all the way up to Gisborne, uh, all the way down past Hastings. With the new station, the public would have greater accessibility to police services in the central city area. This in turn will provide the public with a greater sense of community, confidence and reassurance. And I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. So this is, this is part of the justification. And again, I, just, I really want to reiterate, this is not an anti-policing meeting. It is us really expressing our concerns and perhaps asking the police to respond in a way that gives us confidence. The business case said, divestment of Dalton House. Now Dalton House is where the police headquarters was located. Nothing to do with Bill. Um, and this is the other thing it said, and I'm not too sure what this means because I can't get answers. And other outlying stations. So does that mean that Taradol is going to be closed or are there other community stations going to be closed? So, so that's a... That, that's a question I have, and I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer. And it also says, divestment of a portion of the Napier site is also possible. So that police station, I mean, my, my father used to work opposite <coughs> the Napier police station, so I've been going there for 35 years. Okay, 45 years. <laughs> but a long time. And for those of you who know how long the Napier police station has been on that site, um, and this is what it says, and I quote this, the preferred option will replace the existing 1905 square metre station and other auxiliary buildings with a building of approximately 808 square metres. This will provide the peak staff numbers of approximately 41. And it says the Napier station staff will be on one site. And again, when it says that, I'm not too sure what that means. Because for me, Napier means Taradale, Mariduri, Mariwa. It's, it's the Napier area that is covered by the uh, village's territory. So again, uh, perhaps Tony has an answer to this, but I'm not too sure what that actually means. Okay, currently what we have at the moment is a police station that accommodates 85 staff. Now, when I talk about staff, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about frontline sworn officers. I'm talking about people who are employed by the police. So these are sworn and non-sworn, but they work for the police. District HQ headquarters accommodates 89 staff. So that's a total at this point of 174 staff working in Napier. Now again, I do want to reiterate, that is not sworn or uniform staff. That is all the staff that work for the Napier Police, or for, uh, for police in Napier. The proposal, and I quote, Napier will accommodate 68 staff with a peak of 41 staff and operate as a satellite area station. Yeah. Now, again, the concern I have about that, and maybe I don't understand the terminology, is a satellite station doesn't sound like a station equipped to deal with the needs of a city of 60,000 people. And the concern I have, and we've seen this in another issue that we had said last year, is those who don't live in Hawke's Bay sort of see Hawke's Bay as a city and Napier as a suburb and Hastings as a suburb and Warrow as a suburb. We all know, and I think a lot of people voice this in a referendum right now, I can't remember, but in a referendum we had, Napier and Hastings are quite distinct. 
and a whole lot of areas. Now, there are two concerns I have about this. The first concern is, in fact, the number of sworn staff, i.e. officers in blue who are driving around or this down the crime base and that But the other concern I have about this as well is if we go from 174 staff, and, and I understand that not all these were in the building one time, there's a lot of ship work that goes on, etc., etc., down to 41 staff, that actually has an impact on the CBD in NACA. Because a lot of these people, you know, they go out and they buy coffee, they buy their lunch, they duck out to do their, their Christmas shopping or their birthday shopping or, or, or whatever. So 174 people also not only work in NACA, but they shop in NACA and live in NACA. Well, some of these may live in Hastings, but they're part of the NACA community. We're going to ship a whole lot of these people across to Hastings. Now what that does, is that it's, been, it's difficult to quantify, but what that does is it removes people who shop and eat and spend in Nacon. And that's a concern as well. And I think it might be one of these so-called unintended consequences. Now the other thing is, um, there is as well as a... a um, a property restructure, there's also a policing restructure. And the interesting thing about the policing restructure is the police themselves, or well, some of the, not all of them, I should say, some of the police themselves commented on the restructure. And I'm going to read just, a, just one quote, and it's a very interesting document actually, because one thing I will say <clears throat> is I have never ever met a police officer who isn't passionate about the community within which they work. What this says is there's a, there's a type of officer called a scene of crime officers. Like a scene of crime officer. And there's a, there's a proposal to drop one of these. And it says, and this is, this is from, again, a submission put in, um, scene of crime officers, submissions to proposed Eastern District Constabulary Restructure. And it says, and I quote, we believe the loss of seven day a week coverage will result in some crime scenes being left unattended for several days at a time. The difficulty this causes victims should not be underestimated as they will often go to great lengths to avoid disturbing their scenes or causing them considerable inconvenience at what is often an already difficult time for them. Alternatively, they carry on as normal, which can also result in lost evidence. This isn't about Napier, but these crime stats came out on Friday. What this shows is that February 2014-15, there were 5,028 unlawful entry with intent, like burglary instances, in February, to la February last year. This year, there were 5,889. There has been a 17% increase, or an 861 more crimes than this time last year. Like I said, this is not Hawke's Bay or Eastern Districts, this is across the country. So one thing I would like to say is crime is not dropping. Crime is increasing. In fact, in the last stats that I can make any sense of, we were the only district across the country that recorded more than 1,000 crimes per 10,000 head population. And you know, the thing that concerns me, and again, go and talk about this, the thing that concerns me is that good, hard-working policemen and women who are doing this are going to say, at some point, I've been doing this for 10 years. I love my community, I love my job, but I just can't keep doing more for less. And we lose them. <laughs> As mentioned, what we are going to ask you to, uh, to vote on at the end of this, because I don't think, you know, as a result of this meeting, the police are going to change their plans. But what I would <coughs> like to ask the police to do, and I'll quote this, that the Eastern District's Police Commander will review the new structure and location after 12 months using an evidence-based approach as per the policing excellence objectives that were discussed and adjust priorities and resources accordingly. So what we're asking the police to do is this may drive a sort of efficiency and a massive resolution of crime uh, in, 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 um, in instances and a drop in crime. If it does, fantastic. But if it doesn't, then what we would like is the situation reviewed with more resources put back, more resources put back into Napier if required. In no way is it an exercise to get at the police. In fact, from my own perspective as Mayor of Napier, I can tell you that policing 
and police policy is in fact a central government issue and it is not a local government issue. However, when it starts to affect the constituents of Napier as mayor of Napier, then it becomes my issue. But the policy is very much a central government issue. Just to leap to the end of Stuart's address where he asked for the, to pass that agreement, which I had never seen until I walked in this afternoon, I think what would have to happen is we'd have to ask the police not to sell any police property in Napier until that review is undertaken. And the reason I say that is I had a meeting with Sandra Venables on Friday and she told me that the simple practical reason why they're shifting so many things to Hastings is that they had more property in Hastings that was available and that seems to be a practical answer. They had more property in Hastings that was available therefore they decided to centralise the, the police command centres and all the other things that police do into Hastings. If we in fact if the police sell the surplus property, you're seeing where the new police station is, which is now going to be in Dolphin Street, and so the, the, there will be spare property in Station Street. If they sell that, there will be no going back. So I stress that I think we should be asking the police, until that review is done, not to sell any property in Napier. It does give us a fallback position. I'm really concerned um, with with some of the things I see happening. And as I say, I had a good talk with Sandra on, on Friday, and she allayed some of my fears, but certainly not all of them. And the issue I have with this mobile policing is that we all know that, that different areas have different requirements of numbers of people, and there are certainly could be times when we have little or no cover for emergency policing in Napier. That is a real major concern of mine. If we only have one or two cars in Napier, and for whatever reason, say they pick up somebody for speeding, or they see some hern getting along in a noisy sports car or something, and they pick him up, and, um, and they then find that he's got marijuana or something in the car, and they have to take him to Hastings to process him or whatever. I don't know how police work. I do have a son who's a policeman on my dad, who's, who's based in Hawks Bay. But I don't know how they work, but I know that they have to process these things, and that may take essential police away from Napier. And it's okay to say they're mobile, but as Stuart has already said, the idea that Hawke's Bay is the city, and Napier and Hastings are suburbs of that city, is a nonsense. And that seems to me what the what central government has based their police policy on. It seems to me that they think they can service Napier and Hastings from one central position. Because whilst we're having a new police station and, and, and you know it's going to do a lot of things, it's going to be accessible, it's going to have rooms put aside for community groups, it's going to do some really good things, the new Napier police station. But tell me, any other major city in the world of 60,000 people that is a central tourism town that doesn't have a police station open 24-7. Yeah. It just doesn't exist. I know Tony has told me, Sandra has told me, and son, you don't solve, solve crime with police in the city behind desks and police stations. I understand all that. I understand that. And having a mobile force with modern communications is a way forward. But I still believe we need a 24-7 centralised station that is accessible and the police will quote me figures to say we took surveys and between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning the only person that called him was the milkman. But it's essential that they're there for that odd time when they're needed. I have great respect for many of our old retired policemen, very old some of them, um, and, um, and, and the work that they've done in our city. Just yesterday, I got, on Thursday of last week, I got a ring, and, and Jim Beaton, who was a long-term serving officer in Napier, was turning 94, and he always liked Model A motor cars, and they were ringing around to find somebody that had a Model A that could take Jim out to lunch as a surprise. So yesterday at 6 o'clock in the morning, I went down to my workshop and cleaned up one of my Model A's, and was able to go around and pick up Jim and take him out for his lunch. 
And honestly, he was just so excited. So I've got great respect for the police that have worked in this, in this city. And when I see experienced policemen like Noel Hawkins and Mick Cole writing letters like they did to the paper, that makes me concerned. Because they know policing, and I'm the first to admit that I don't. But they're long serving policemen who know how the system works. Sure, time's moved on. Sure, we need to look at new modern systems. Sure, we've got modern communications and, and, and electronics that weren't available in Nolan next time. But the end result is that policing is about people. And it's about people looking after people. And my concern is that in Napier, we're going to have less people and less accessibility to those people to look after the community in Napier. And I'll do whatever I can to try and make sure that the New Zealand police, and as I say, it is a, it is a central government matter, but I'll fight for, the, for Napier to make sure we have the best policing facilities possible. Thank you. So the Bobby on the Street did a fantastic job, in my opinion. 
What happens when police own a resource? And what I'm talking about here is resources is neither numbers of police or the machinery and equipment they've got. I just see it as a resourcing issue. What happens? Your level of crime, no doubt, is the best measuring stick of police resources. So if you've got an increase in crime, you've got uh, some problems there somewhere. And I believe it's a problem with police resourcing. I am a huge supporter of the police. So if you like Stuart Lightbill, you won't hear one anti-police word from me. And I'm talking about the policemen who are fighting night and day to keep you and I safe. They are the real coppers on the street. This is what happens when we under-resource the police. I mean, I grew up at a time when this country was the safest country in OECD, bar none. You know, we had one or two homicides a year. And it wasn't just a blood. That was for the first 25 or 30 years of my lifetime. And we held that. As the population went from 1 million to 2 million, obviously crime increased, but very, very small. We had a fantastic system. We had a fantastic police force. But what we lost, what we, lost we went took from 1 or 2 homicides a year to 164 homicides a year. Other crime follows that trend, as I showed you that graph there before, a violent crime every 10 minutes. This was on the police website when I was doing my apprenticeship to learn to stand up to what I am doing today. What was going on in New Zealand? You know, I thought it was some judges or politicians' job somewhere to stand up and say, maybe we made a wrong turn as a nation. Maybe we need to revisit some of these things. So I started doing my homework before we formed Sensible Citizen Trust, just so I could be an advocate for safer communities. So a violent crime every 10 minutes, a sexual assault every three hours, seven police assaulted every day. Now, as I said to you, I pushed the boundaries and broke a few doors. But one thing I never lost was my total respect and admiration for the police. Never. But what those police have to put up with today, and what I see going on around the country, man, we have made some wrong decisions as a nation of what's going on here. An increasing level of domestic violence, the police will know very much about what I'm talking about here. Rampant child abuse, thousands more victims, and as an organisation, we're dealing with a lot of those victims of crime. Advocating for them, starting to understand, because every victim we deal with represents a failure in the system somewhere. And then we can advocate for change. So whether the offender was out on bail, whether he was on parole, whatever it was, we can then go and start advocating in Parliament to change the legislation that has failed you as the people. Thousands more victims, but what worried me particularly as a dad, I've got four daughters and five grandchildren now, was that many of the victims that we are dealing with are women and children. So that was what I was alarmed about, and that was led me, I suppose, to setting up the Sensible Citizen Trust. But as I started doing the research for this particular meeting, I came across on the Police Association website, John Key made a speech to the Police Association annual conference in 2007. This is what he said. More police in proportion to the total to the population reduces crime. Totally agree with John Lee. So we want more police on the BDC. Totally agree with John Lee. The only way for police numbers to go up is up. Totally agree with John there. And then he became Prime Minister the following year, didn't he? <laughs> what has happened? And I don't want to make a political statement out of this. This is a policing issue in NAPA that we're dealing with here. But ultimately, if we're going to change something, it is part of it that changes it. Mm -hmm. But what has happened? Let's have a look at it. Official Information Act requests. You don't need to read all that if you, if you want it all. I'm happy to give it to you, or Stuart will be happy to give it to you. But let's just look at the eastern region. After John Key has said that he wants more police on the beat, what we've actually seen is very nearly a 20% <coughs> reduction here in Hawke's Bay. Over the country, we've seen a 17% reduction. Stuart's talked about the crime levels. I've talked about the crime levels. Can you correlate that directly with the numbers of police you've got on the street? I believe you can. There's no other explanation, in my opinion. Someone might come up with one. But I don't believe it. Naked Police Station. Let's get back to what we're talking about here. And this document that Stuart talked about, and I'm talking about, is called a business case study. And as I said, it's more bureaucratic speech if you've ever seen one. So the present situation today is, Hastings has 135 staff, Naked has 85 staff, Dalton House is 89. Stuart's talked about this, and I don't want to repeat what Stuart's told you. Outlying regions have 36. Total of 345. What's proposed in this document is Hastings Hub, they're going to call it. That's the new buzzword. Mm -hmm. Hastings Hub. 183. Napier Satellite Station. 
And nobody's able to satisfy me with you know, what a satellite station is going to be for Napier. You know? I'm, really, I'm really concerned about that fact. As Bill said, you know, we've got tourists in this town, and this country relies on tourism now. So we need a good police force, in my opinion. We need good law and order. So the proposed rule is a, a total of 251 staff, a loss of 94 staff. Now some of these figures may be subject to interpretation, but you're welcome to read the document. Stuart will send it to you, or I will send it to you, either which way. What does that mean for Napier? That's what we're here to talk about. Napier loses 17 staff at our police station and Dalton House with 89 staff. That's gone. If this gets adopted, and I don't think there's any argument that it will. What does it mean for the region? <coughs> region you loses 94 staff, but wait, there's a lot more when you read this thing. And Stuart talked about it. It talks about a divestment of all outlying police stations will be made. So does that mean they do? What does it mean? But, I mean, that's really the alarming thing. As I said, it's a bunch of bureaucrats that have written this thing in a bureaucratic talk. It's quite alarming. It really is. They've just forgotten that they're dealing with good mums and dads who all we want is public safety. But pretty alarming what's happening here. Relevant points for you to consider. And once again, thanks for coming to the media. Really appreciate it. Police budget has been frozen for five years. The police are under an enormous amount of pressure. Enormous amount of pressure. <laughs> And yet, every study that I have seen, the public are happy to spend more on the police. It's this budget thing nonsense is coming out of Wellington. It's not coming from the people. We just spent $25 million on a flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dollar-driven business. This business case that we talked about here is dollar-driven. It talks about meeting investment objectives. I'm going to say, you know, I'm, I'm totally, I'll stand here for as long as I can be, be on about public safety must be paramount, our safety. It's not about dollars. It can't be about dollars. <coughs> on any given night, there will, under this new study, there will be no more than six uniformed police on duty in either Hastings or Napier. Given, and I'm supportive of this, there are normally two police in a, in a car and a unit, and that's fine. So two man patrols means you'll have three actual units. Holding cells, as Stuart and uh, Bill have mentioned, are going to be in Hastings, taking out of Napier. So one of those units is going to be acting as a taxi. Unless they're going to actually hire a taxi and send it, and that won't happen. So one of them is going to be acting as a taxi service. So you'll have four coppers, two units. Ninety percent of burglaries are already unresolved in this country. No time, no stuff. And I'm supportive of the police, but this is the reality of it. They can't stand up here and say what we are saying. I bet a lot of them would love to, but they can't. Most offences are never investigated. Once again, no time, no start. And I'm supportive of the police, but that is the reality of what we're facing people. New Zealand Crime and Safety reveal, re reveals that only 31% of all crime is actually reported to them. The police acknowledge in that crime and safety survey that <coughs> not all reported crime is recorded in their annual report. So what I said earlier, is this just another way of meeting that target to reduce crime by X by X year? It's really got to be. It's a manipulation of the figures at best. Police rely on public trust and confidence. I, got, I was lucky enough to meet with the police chief from uh, Singapore recently. He said that 90% of their crime is solved by their relationship with the community they work with. So they need the community, they need us. And we need to see the police, you need to know who they are. Like the Bobby on the street, win the confidence. Does this proposal give you confidence? <coughs> I don't believe it does, but that's what we're here to discuss. And there's some people who might say, as Stuart has said, let's give it a chance. Because we probably have no option. So we're not going to have to give it a chance. So I totally agree with where Stuart's going with his... Um, with it, the resolution is going to move. The only way we can own it is to know what's happened. As I said, I've period in my lifetime. I was born in 1951. And I own what's happened in this country. Because the kids, the younger people are going to think what's happening on the street is the norm. Mm -hmm. You and I know it's not. And you and I are the only ones that can stand up and advocate the change. So get your copy today. People, call to action. Your country, your future, your choice. Public safety, in our opinion, 
must be paramount. And that's what we're here for. And I'll be, bang on about this as long as I need to. So thank you very much for listening to me. Sure, thank you very much. So as you've seen, I think this proposal raises a whole lot more questions than it answers. Um, but what we have decided is, you know, we would like um, a question time, but we'd also like to give people the opportunity to stand up and relay their stories or their concerns. One thing I would urge uh, Tanya to perhaps take back is, you know, putting full page ads in the Napier and Hastings Mail costs next to nothing. Well, it costs a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I know, I do it every week. But, but utilising these forms of communication to let us know what's going on would be fantastic. But you know, so we're... If what we really want to do is open the floor. So if you've got a story to tell, because Tanya is here, she will um, take this up. I don't know, the gentleman beside you, sorry. Mr. So Rob Jones is relieving for me at the moment. I'm in, uh, oh, Rob, hi, welcome. Yeah. So um, you know, what, what will be said here, uh, Tanya and Rob can take back and relay, and hopefully what we will see as a result of this, if nothing else, then at least some answers to our questions or answers to the concerns that we have voiced here today. But uh, questions? Touch it back. Yeah, I have a question and a comment to make. Um, my question is the satellite station that's being built in Napier at the moment, is it future-proof? If this, in 12 months, doesn't work out the way Parliament sees it working out, will they be able to put a second story on or a third story on because we need more police? Is that possible? Or is it going to be a single story because that's all we hold? That's a really good point, and I think what we must do with that resolution is take on board Bill's point, is for the police not to sell that land until we completely understand whether this is working or not. The other thing I must say is that police is, is an interesting area for Parliament. Politicians are not allowed to tell the police what to do. Now, other ministries we are. And it makes sense because, you know, you don't really want political interference in policing. But the best way to get influence in policing is meetings like this, is people putting their concerns forward and police taking them back and, and then making their own operational decisions. But you can understand that we need to be very careful when we've got criticism about the size of things. For instance, the existing Napier police station, in my understanding, I think virtually the top floor is a bar. Used to be. Or used to be a bar, yeah. which, which, which is no longer used, and now police are discouraged from having that culture where they, where they drink on the premises. So, you know, effectively, the, the difference in square footage is not as dramatic as you would think. Can I ask a question? Uh, all these things you've been talking about this afternoon, is that a proposal by the government, or is it a done deal? Well, one thing I must say is this is from the government. This is from uh, this is the Eastern District Police that has gone forward to the Commissioner. And my understanding is the Commissioner has signed off. Because what it actually says in the, in the business case is there are some action points. One is that the Commissioner signs off on this. Two, he makes the funding available. And three, I think there's a timeline. So my understanding is this has been signed off. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. But again, um, that's why I say, when people say, what difference can we make? Well, for this proposal, I think this is a done deal, but that's why we're asking the police to at least give us the chance to review this. And if it's working, if crime's dropped, fantastic. But if it hasn't, let's meet again in 12 months to see what we need to do. Well, there is a microphone. Jerry, could you perhaps come up? The question was, how many, how many nights in the last 12 months has there been no police available from the United States? We know that. No. I, think, I think when you ask for police available to Napier, I think we have to be honest. Well, available to Napier, I think the answer would be none. Yeah. There will always be police available to Napier. It's a case of whether they're here or whether they happen to be in Hastings doing something that's... Well, I understand that, but if they're here, they're a lot more on the job. Yeah. And if they're somewhere else, they're just somewhere I don't else. Know. I don't know. And I, I, I think this, this is what's going to happen in the plans for the, the future of the... Or being based in that's pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> 68, actually. The, the, I'm a simple man, so I'm simple for figures. The, the station will have a capacity for 68, but it'll hold 41 at any one time. 
Right, that's where my figure's even worse. So I looked at four day shift, four afternoon shift, two on night shift. That's not counting sick leave, days in loo, public holidays, rostered off, uh, appearances in court. So how many are we going to be left with on each shift? And that's a very, very good question. Most of the people in this room here would be from Napier, would I be right? There is a parallel we should not forget, and that parallel is pointing to a future which does need to be fought against. In 1993, in the Hawke's Bay area, there were 815 nurse staff doctored beds operating out of four hospitals for people of Hawke's Bay. That's been reduced to one hospital in the name of efficiency, now in Hastings, which provides 280 beds. And if you want to find the reason why people find it difficult to get medical attention on the public purse, that's it. Now this is a process which has been going on in this country for the last 20 or 30 years. And I notice that Roger Douglas isn't in this audience. <laughs> but the name of the game is to save money, uh, save public money. And that involves wringing it out of people by fair means or foul in the three areas that people in this country need security. One is in that of public uh, personal safety. The other is in education. And the third one is in health. And all are in decline. Thank you. Um, just one concern I have is the justice system here. We have a courthouse and I don't know how many people in the justice system. Is this going to go into decline as well, like a domino effect? Yep. I think there's a very strong likelihood that the courthouse may be closed. centralising everything in this big complex in Hastings, and I think the next thing could easily be, and I have no proof of that, but I certainly have heard rumours about it, um, and I think it's a, it's a very strong likelihood could, that the courthouse in Napier, imagine it's another whole bunch of people out of the CBD. You know, the, 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 they've spent, uh, um, this gentleman down here, the, they've spent a um, million dollars, just over a million dollars, doing up uh, the Hastings police cells, when asked why, well, this is near the courthouse, and so people can go from the cells to the courthouse. So I, I completely agree with you, Bill. I think this is a centralisation towards Hastings. Uh, thank you. I think your notes that went up early on about the new police station said that the public will have greater <laughs> access to police services with it. Could you explain what is meant by getting greater access to police services because we've got a new station. Well, what, what I would say is I was putting that up because they said this is what it would buy. And, and I had my doubts about that. It is Bill alluded to. The new station will have meeting rooms and it'll be open to the public in a way the current one isn't. But my concern is when you reduce staff from 85 or 61 however many in there down to 41, then the ability to actually access it in a timely manner will be gone. Bill, do you want to communicate? No, I, think, I think it's very important to realise that the new police station does provide officers for um, the community patrols, it provides officers for um, Maori wardens to use and all those sort of things. But the truth is, we actually want police. Yes. All of those services are grown because we probably don't have enough police. That's how it feels. And I think we need to be just a little, little bit concerned, and I don't want to hack back to the, um, the innovation debate of last year. But the crux of that debate was the fact that Napier is a community. It is a community of people. And I think what's being lost in government policy, and a lot of this policy coming out of Wellington, is the word community. And this community deserves to be looked after. Um, my name is Pat McGill. I was born in Napier in 1926, and I came along totally out of respect for uh, 
um, Noel Hawkins and Mick Carl and all those that were before him, Monty Timms, the whole lot of them, Claude Snow, brilliant policemen. So that's why I came. I didn't come here from a political point of view. But I just wanted to take issue on Garth because I attended Garth's original meeting and um, over the years Garth has been over to Arizona and ball and chains and all the concerns naturally, um, boot camps and those because he's been concerned with crime. And, and I'm all for him. But there's a balance to this today that we don't go overboard only on police because in this town it's a balance. Behind the police, and I'll say this for the new policing, you've got into restorative justice, refuges, brilliant school teaching, and it's a total package in this town which John Robson described as a city that's not too large to learn about itself. So unless you look at earlier intervention, and Garth should know that earlier intervention produced fewer victims of crime, policing on its own, vindictive, punitive policing only turns us into a mess because there's a lot of people here in this town who've been hurt by colonisation and urbanisation and, and they deserve nursing along and patience. So let's look at the town with the balance and support love one another with love. concerns about things that have happened in, in just recent times and to go to the police station and find no one there to pick up a phone and talk to someone in Auckland who's got no idea of what's going on at all, it is absolutely uh, it's pathetic and I think the police should actually be embarrassed about what uh, what the service they now provide in terms of the comm centres and accessibility and that's one of their prime objectives so I think they're failing miserably. I don't want to achieve it. And, and the interesting thing is that um, I've got a lot of friends with police and a lot of them are concerned about what's happening. Like I said, they're all as passionate about our community as, as we are. They have concerns as well. I, I'm just wondering, the attendance here today is great and there's a lot of concerns and I think a lot of things that have been said raise further issues. But I just wonder, is the Eastern District Commander prepared to hold a public meeting following this to answer some of the concerns that have been raised. I mean, say, so I think she needs to be given the opportunity to, um, to respond. And uh, I think in a way of starting a better communication, if they were to hold a public meeting outlining what they plan to do and why, um, would go a long way to make a better communication and understanding. So it's, it's a very good point. And in fact, when we need to wheel out the Mayor's brand new chair, so there's enough for residents, um, I, you know, we, I would highly recommend that the police do hold a similar meeting. And I'm sure Sandra has answers to all the questions that we have. But you know, one of the hopes is we can walk away from this sort of public meeting feeling reassured that everything's in hand. But as mentioned, today's meeting is only what up a lot more questions than answers. Yeah, hi, my name's Brooke, and I'd just like to say that it's fantastic to see some of the people here. My concern is that, yeah, we haven't got enough police, but the issue really should be how we can get more. Not, you know, I mean, what you guys are doing is great, but to me it's a political thing. Uh, it's about shrinking democracy, and because we're not organised, <laughs> we haven't got a voice. It's that simple. I mean, we're a strong voice here, but we don't represent the whole community. It takes the whole community to stand up and say, hey, we've had enough of this crap. We need more cops to give themselves. We pay our taxes. That's as simple as that. I completely agree. And, and this is a... This is a uh, well, Good afternoon. My name's Anna Lork, and I'm here today representing the Hawke's Bay Community Collective with my um, friend here, Ted Tobik. We started the Hawke's Bay Community Collective after the Clive Police Station closed. It wasn't about a single police station, it was about what was happening right across Hawke's Bay. Now today we've got over 3,500 members. We've signed up because we think that 
Um, it's really important, and I'm going to read out why, just so I get the words right, because I'm going to ask you all to join our collective, if you can, and sign up before you go. Police numbers, this was a year ago we started. Police numbers be, are being cut in our region, while we have some of the worst crime rates in the country. We are against the removal of community-based police officers. We are asking for the New Zealand Police to undertake a full consultation process with the people of Hawke's Bay before decisions are made to close our community police stations, cut police numbers and remove daily community police presence in our villages, towns and cities. The Hawke's Bay Community Collective is building a stronger voice on decisions being made which impact on our local communities. Now I've stood here today and I mean I've been here and I've listened to everything. The biggest problem we have is that we don't know what's going on. We have to have a public meeting like this to see those numbers up there. We've met with the police, I've met with the police, Ted's met with the police. We keep asking if you just let us know what's going on. Because when the people know the facts, the country's safe. So. I absolutely applaud what's going on. It's fantastic that it's happening in Napier. We've started in Clive. We're going through Havelock. We've been to um, out to the Cape Coast. We've got things going on in Flaxmere. We've got people in Napier that have signed up, and we just want more people to join our collective. And maybe, maybe through building our public voice, we can find out more before decisions are made like this, because. We're going to be a year on now finding out what's happening in Napier. We don't need to be a year on now finding out what's happening across the rest of Hawke's Bay. Kevin, I mean, if anything's going to come out of this, we can voice our discontentment, and I think Tanya and Rob have heard this, but are we happy to put forward a resolution that at least we can give to the district commander it actually says, okay, if, you, if this is going to drive greater efficiency, if this is going to create, um, uh, if there's targets there, crime's going to drop, resolution rates are going to increase, all the things that the police excellence talks about, then that's fantastic. But if it doesn't, then how about we catch up in a year's time, or 18 months' time, yeah. and ask her, yeah. Yeah. in a year's time, and ask her to review it. Because it hasn't worked, but it might have worked, and we might be sitting here in a year's time saying, "Fantastic, we've achieved everything we wanted." We all suspect we won't, but it does it. So, can I read out this resolution? What it says is that the Eastern District's Police Commander will review the new structure and location after 12 months using an evidence-based approach. That means the facts, uh, as per the policing excellence objectives, which means the objectives the police themselves have. Like, and adjust priorities and resources accordingly. And I think this has been taken care of for what Tony said, but the other thing is that no Napier assets will be sold or likewise disposed of until a thorough review has been undertaken. Does everyone agree with that?